Jane Watson is one of the worst adapted comic book characters in all of history. What's that? You disagree? Well, guess what? I'm going to convince you otherwise. Mary Jane Watson has appeared as a comic book character, a video game character, a film character, and pretty much any medium of Spider-Man that you can think of. So naturally, you're bound to have all sorts of adaptations of her character. But recently, she's kind of been pissing me off, I'm not gonna lie, okay? Recently, Mary Jane's character has been exposed to a range of adaptations that don't exactly translate her genuine characteristics presented in the comics very accurately. And this change has become widespread to the point where Mary Jane's character isn't even Mary Jane anymore, which doesn't make any sense, but let me explain. And you know who I blame for this? Yeah, that's right, I blame Marvel Spider-Man. Yeah, the godsend of Spider-Man media, I blame them. But to understand why Mary Jane is so poorly adapted in recent Spider-Man media, we have to understand her comic book background a little better. So let's rewind the years and let's look at Mary Jane's comic book history. Mary Jane Watson is a single child with a father called Philip Watson. Philip, during her early childhood, would abuse her mother in front of her and would verbally go after Mary Jane as well. This severely affected Mary Jane growing up internally. She kept all of her built-up trauma and emotions locked away inside. But to hide those emotions, she needed a facade to cover up on the outside. Therefore, during her teenage years, after moving in with her aunt Anna Watson, she adopted a rather party-like mentality. And this is where this idea actually originally came from. When everyone says, oh, Mary Jane is a party girl, this is exactly what they mean. Her personality was one that was mysterious, yet intriguing. And like you'd imagine, this attracted the attention of the lads. But one of the people that didn't actually take any interest in Mary Jane whatsoever was actually Peter Parker. And in an ironic fashion, Mary Jane saw Peter as intriguing because of this. Everyone was always going after her, but Peter Parker wasn't. And Mary Jane thought, this was quite odd. She found this infatuating about Peter. And like her, Peter had a disappearing act, which saw him leave social events, work, and even college suddenly with no explanation. And even though Peter had a girlfriend at the time, Gwen Stacy, at the back of her mind, Peter intrigued her. In the later comics, after her backstory was realized more, the connection was made that MJ saw a lot of herself in Peter Parker, not just on the outside, but on the inside emotionally as well. Emotionally, MJ and Peter were soulmates, and MJ ultimately saw someone that she could express her true self in front of, unlike the many people that had been just attracted to her because of her party girl-like facade, which obviously wasn't MJ at all. That was just her cover-up for her true emotions and feelings. This type of Mary Jane would go on to be adapted during the 90s animated Spider-Man show, where a lot of the same qualities from the comics were present during the show. But apart from that, I want to ask you a question. Does that character that I have just described to you sound anything like any of the adaptations that we've got of Mary Jane over the last couple of years? No. And if you say yes, then... I'm sorry, you're wrong. So now let's cut to 2002, and Sam Raimi releases his first feature-length Spider-Man film. Mary Jane in this film faced a lot of criticism for her unlikable nature, and while her character wasn't handled as well as she was in the comics, a lot of the same features of her backstory were still present in Raimi's adaptation. However, many of these features, like her abusive father, would be part of the character and the film in general that would go unnoticed and would go unremembered by fans in years to come. Because mostly people talk about how Mary Jane just cheats on people in these films, and rightly so, right, because she does. But at the end of the day, Mary Jane in these films actually had a backstory with a lot of depth and a lot of detail to it as well. And it was actually very similar to the comics in that regard. However, this was only for the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. As the film's continued all the way into Spider-Man 3, Mary Jane would kind of become her own character, one that kind of Raimi made himself, if that makes any sense. Sam Raimi would go on to create a version of Mary Jane that was quite disconnected from what we knew in the comics. It would kind of be his own take on the character, even though she shared a lot of the backstory that the comics version did as well. And thus, I think this is where the transformation for Mary Jane in Spider-Man media began. This was the no turning back point for the character. The mainstream effect of the Raimi films meant that a definitive version of Mary Jane was now the one from the movies, as you'd imagine, you know, brand synergy in that. However, as media continued to portray Mary Jane throughout the years, many shows, films, and games pulled various different traits into the character. 
One of those was the Ultimate Spider-Man TV series from 2012. During Ultimate Spider-Man, Mary Jane was given the role as a reporter, a classical comic book trait usually hosted by Lois Lane in the Superman comics. The happy-go-lucky reporter personality adopted by MJ's character in this TV show is something far from what Mary Jane had always been known for. In fact, during a 20-year period from the 90s to the late 2010s, arguably we have got three different versions of Mary Jane's character in just those 20 years alone. One is the original Party Girl comic book version, the other is the Lois Lane archetype from the Ultimate Spider-Man TV series, and the last version of the character is Sam Raimi's MJ, which was stuck in the middle of this Lois Laneified Ultimate Spider-Man version of the character, and obviously the original comic book Party Girl version of the character as well. However, one thing that I thought was very interesting was that the Ultimate Spider-Man version of MJ didn't really meet much criticism, but I think the reason for this was that the show as a whole was criticised on a large basis, meaning that MJ's unjustified change of character went a little bit under the radar since there were bigger problems to the show as a whole. The whole show was generally considered not what to do when you make a Spider-Man story, so MJ's character was not a big issue when it came to the grand scheme of things. However, this idea of Mary Jane being a reporter was planted, and a version that was nowhere near to the original source material was created. And thus, this brings us to Marvel Spider-Man, which came out in 2018. The game received popular reception, some people even going on to state that it was the perfect Spider-Man story. And while the game does execute its characters in a very compelling way, including the likes of Mary Jane Watson, who was written incredibly well for what she was, but the issue still stood that Mary Jane was nothing like she was from the comics. And I can't help but think that this version of Mary Jane isn't Mary Jane at all. MJ in Marvel Spider-Man is a reporter, and even in the sequel, she will go on to work for the Daily Bugle with J. Jonah Jameson as her employer. Now, who does that sound like to you? It doesn't sound like Mary Jane to me. Now, I want to make something very clear. I'm not against adaptations. In fact, I praise them. In many videos that I've made on this channel in the past, I've always praised adaptations. Whether it be on videos, live streams, or Discord chats, I've always made clear that I love adaptations of characters. I think that they can be a great way to spice up a character's history, their backstory. Adaptations give writers opportunities to put their own spin on a classic character. It also gives great opportunities to writers to take established characters that they may love and then give their own opinion on how that character should be handled and how that character should be presented going forward in the future. Like, for example, we've all done this. If you've ever written a fan fiction, heck, if you've ever just thought of an idea for a Spider-Man movie in the past, you've thought of a way of adapting Spider-Man, which is an adaptation. So we've all done it. We've all had our take, our say on these characters. But the one thing that I'm against when adapting a character is ripping the core element of what gave them their identity in the first place. For example, even though we have had very different versions of Spider-Man throughout the years of his existence, from Tom Holland's techie, Tony Stark-inspired Spider-Man, to Tobey Maguire's more reserved take on the webhead, and even to Ultimate Spider-Man's snarky, kid-like attitude, they all run on one key principle. With great power comes great responsibility. No matter how their stories are told, no matter what direction the creative teams behind those projects decide to take them in, they all still conform to that one classic Spider-Man trait. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't be Spider-Man. Guess what? The same applies to any other character, including Mary Jane Watson. But Mary Jane can be different. Heck, she has been different in the past. But from what we've seen in Insomniac's universe, this is not Mary Jane. In fact, she doesn't even have any characteristics associated with Mary Jane other than the red hair. And it's not even red! But either way, to mainstream fans and to modern fans of the character, Mary Jane isn't what she used to be. And her identity and what made her special has been lost in the wilderness of countless reimaginations of the character, where fresh takes have overridden the importance of what made her Mary Jane Watson in the first place. I do hope that one day, maybe even in the next MCU Spider-Man film, that we do get a version of MJ that is closer to the comic books and closer to what we originally 
knew way back when. Zendaya's version of the character proved that there is something to her backstory that hasn't exactly been fully fleshed out yet. So if she is to reappear in the next film, maybe that's something that they play on and maybe they do go down the route of her being like the original comic MJ, if you get what I mean. Either way, that's why I believe Mary Jane is technically one of the worst adapted comic book characters in history. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit a like on it. That always helps the channel out and tells the YouTube algorithm that you like my videos so you'll get recommended them more and also other people get to see them as well. Make sure to subscribe if you are new as well for weekly Spider-Man content. We post every single Wednesday and Saturday and make sure to hit the bell so you do not miss any more videos in the future. Also, I just want to put an announcement out. We're going to be streaming Marvel Spider-Man on October 20th as well and all the way through that weekend. So make sure you are subscribed. You don't want to miss that. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.